Alrighty guys, we're doing a little bit of a different video today, so <clears throat> this is This is a fence master. Oops. Fence master junior. And um, this thing was intermittent. And I actually found a website on YouTube that fixes these. And shout out to them. I'll put their um, YouTube channel in the description. I'll also put it in the video and text. Uh, everything looks good. Nothing's burnt. Everything looks great. The one thing I did find, so the problem was this was intermittent. <clears throat> and so I didn't know if it was the transformer. This is, I think, a secondary transformer that transforms the high voltage. This is a transformer that goes from 110 to 220, I believe, or 250. This is the capacitor. Now, what I did find on the transformer, that solder joint is cracked and so I believe that um, that's what's going on I'll see if I can get it up close for you guys handy dandy screw so it's cracked right there and there's also some haloing around that pin so we're gonna repuddle that I'm gonna add some solder to it. We're gonna take the capacitor off. I bought a um, eight farad capacitor on Amazon. Now my concern here would be that this burns out this transformer. I don't know enough about electronics. Um, if this is putting too much heat through this, if it'll burn it out. So this is a little bit of an experiment. We're going to use some hot glue to get this to, down on the board. But for now, we're going to repuddle um, the two leads for the 12 volts or for the high voltage side. And of course, I've got crap everywhere. So, what I'm going to be doing at this point is puddling these two. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and puddle those two. So. We'll give it a nice big heat reservoir. Oh, did that start to fall out? It sure did. Okay, so what I need to do, <clears throat> I need to plug the transformer in because I need to make sure these pins are correct. I'm using the transformer to align those pins. I don't know if that's right or not. Okay, while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and get these pins filled in a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see that. This is for the 110 plug. And we are going to desolder the capacitor. First, we'll bend this back. Ooh, don't touch the hot part. All right, that was super fun. I don't think I damaged the capacitor. All righty, um, I don't think these are gonna fit these holes on the board, so I think I'm gonna have to drill those out. All right, so we're gonna drill holes for the um, larger capacitor wires. Enlarge these via holes. Okay. 
and I can see the pads on the other side are big enough. And we'll stick this down afterwards with some hot glue. So let's see here. Okay, I want these to act like solid metal instead of stranded. So we are going to, oops, cap came off. We're gonna tin these up real quick. sure that these go through <laughs> you know I'm left-handed let me get all this crap out of the road and get my soldering gun over on the right correct side for me anyways does this have polarity I don't believe it does I don't see any polarity markings so we're going to assume it does not. And it looks like it's going to fit these two. In case you're wondering, uh, 8 microfarad, 250 volts AC. The other one, the other capacitor was, um, <clears throat> this one here was, the board says 4 microfarads. So, let's see if we can get this a little closer. Alrighty, we'll go ahead and solder these on. Get off of there. Uh, yeah, no one said I knew exactly what I was doing here. Let's see, now I need some really small nippers. Where did I, where are those at? And what else are we doing here? I think that's it. I think this is um, where I want it to be. I gotta go get the hot glue gun real quick. All right guys, this may be a mistake. I'm gonna put some hot glue in here and hope that that, um, Keeps this capacitor relatively still. Hopefully the board doesn't get that hot, but who knows. So there's the hot glue gun. Now what we're going to do is get these pins back on. Oh, I need to go get some dielectric grease. I told myself I was going to do that. All right, so we'll get a little teeny tiny bit of dielectric grease on here. Alrighty, now that I got dielectric grease all over my hands, we will get these in. Okay, get in there. Sorry guys, doing this out of view here. OK. 
Come on, get over the top of that bar. There we go. Oh. oh don't bend the pins. There's little pins that the circuit board goes on and doesn't exactly fit super well. Let's see here. Okay, these happen to be 10 millimeter. So I'll be holding them on this end. And tightening on this end. Gee, many Christmas, if I could get this. All right, uh, greens on this side, fences on this side. We're gonna go find out if this works or not. All right, I uh, got the lighting a little better. Hopefully there's not bars. Um, I'll show you what's going on. So if this thing had contactors, it's like the contactors get stuck open, but it doesn't have contactors. I believe it's solid state, so I don't know what's going on. I'll tap it and it starts working. I thought it was the solder connection. I'm not sure what's going on. <clears throat> So um, I would say that it's definitely got more power. The light is way brighter. I'm going to go check the spark gap out on the fence. Uh, we'll assume this thing keeps running for a while. Uh, hopefully it delivers uh, more of a spark for the cows because they're not like the goats. They don't care about getting shocked. Hope this helps somebody. If you guys have this model, it's a Fence, fence Master Junior by Gallagher, I believe. Uh, anyways, talk to you guys later. Bye.